Hey everyone, Cynix here. Today I felt like talking a bit about appeal in art, or rather the struggle between realism and appealism. Let me just provide a short disclaimer at this time. Everything I'm talking about in this video is highly subjective to my own personal art goals, and there is no right or wrong opinion to have on this matter. Okay, personally, my biggest fear anytime I start studying the more fundamental side of art is that I will lose track of the most important aspect of art, which is making something that appeals to people. I see this as a common struggle for a lot of artists. The more technically skilled and talented you become, the more boring your art starts to feel. Of course, some people might feel that hyperrealism is the pinnacle of art, and that's completely fine, but I personally find it a bit unappealing. If you look back through history, Picasso is probably the most notable artist to struggle with the battle of realism and appealism. A lot of his most famous quotes deal with this matter, but one good example is when he said, it took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child. So Picasso is an interesting case. He grew up when classical art training was the only type of art training, and he was considered a child prodigy in classical art at a young age. It's probably this young age that led him to be more questioning on the established notions on art. So he rebelled, and this meant rejecting classical realism in the most extreme way he could. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the art he produced, but the lesson to be learned is more important than anything, and my opinion on art lies somewhere between the extremes that he helped set. Picasso most often associated this concept of appealing art with children or children's ability in art, but I think that only hints at the real point. Kids can definitely be considered very creative. The way they think and construct art is exciting because they haven't been instilled with any fundamentals or concepts of art theory. But childlike ignorance certainly isn't the heart of appeal. It's just one type of convenient cause. I think it's really up to us to figure out the science of appeal and constantly be practicing it in our art. This is a bit of a tricky subject to teach, and in fact, it really shouldn't be in any formal capacity. Don't expect an art school to teach you how to have style. And the only thing I hope to teach you is that style is important, and you should at least try to exercise it often if you want to reach your art goals. Anyway, let's go over some of the ways artists use appeal in their art to transcend simple realism. In my own art, I like to think that tangents are some of the most important factors when it comes to appeal. I often like to encourage people to dabble in graffiti style experiments to help improve their eye for tangents and shape relations. In a lot of ways, I consider my video on graffiti style art to be one of the most valuable ones on this whole channel. Don't be put off if you're not interested in graffiti as a concept, it's really just a video about shape interactions. Aside from that, I think one of the most universally accepted forms of stylization and appeal is often conveyed through color. I like to mention the story of my plain air painting adventures, where I would go out with friends and try to paint some landscapes. At first, I had assumed the goal was to accurately recreate what you were looking at. And don't get me wrong, that is actually an extremely beneficial goal to aim for, you can learn a lot about colors, but it wasn't until I actually went out with a professional plain air painter that I learned that the end goal wasn't about recreating what you were looking at, which is something a camera could do, it was about recreating the feel of the environment, and oftentimes involves subtly rearranging objects, and more importantly, using cooler and warmer tones in different parts to bring the painting to life. Equally important is using levels of abstraction and impressionism to increase appeal. Talented watercolor artists probably represent the more extreme elements of this. People such as Joseph Zbukvic, who makes amazing art. I do recommend next time you're in some quaint coastal town with a bunch of art galleries, be sure to check them out and try to figure out which artists are just copying from photographs they took and which ones are actually capturing something interesting and appealing that they saw. It's a fun little game to play. Exploring color is also extremely valuable in painting people in more lifelike ways. Sorry for using the word lifelike, I don't want you to confuse lifelike with realistic. Let's just say they have more life to them than a hyper-realistic painting ever could. Some examples of this might be the strained and red faces of someone like Phil Hale, or perhaps the overly hue-variating skin tones of Jenny Seville. These examples are heavily rooted in realism, and it's probably less than 5% of the painting that is straying away from realism, but that 5% is really what's making something special happen. Even old masters understood that colors were an important place to explore and venture away from realism ever so slightly. 
Skin tone variations are always a fun thing to observe when it comes to the differences between old masters. So hopefully I have shown that even a small level of appealism is always more valuable than pure realism. But what about Picasso and his extreme dive into anti-realism? Just what is the proper ratio of realism that you should be aiming for in your art? Well, I think that will differ for everyone, but the thing I, once again, urge you to do is just not forget about it. Experiment with it and be mindful of it. It really applies to everything. Colors are the easy sell, almost universally agreed upon, but what about things like anatomy? Are you okay with abandoning realistic anatomy for the sake of appeal? The more extreme examples of this might be shown in things like anime, but I'm sure some of you are thinking that clearly realistic anatomy should be the goal of an artist. Certainly it's not a bad stepping stone, but if you think back to what we observed about colors, maybe you'll start to rethink your opinion a little. Maybe that little deviation from realism, even if it's just 5%, is going to make everything a hundred times more appealing in the end. I can tell you I've done a lot of figure drawing over the past few years, and in my experience, a perfectly accurate likeness will never look as good as an ever so slightly stylized one. Even something as simple as making hands slightly wider so the fingers can express added personality, it can do a lot for a likeness. Now, if you want me to really climb a little further out onto this branch, I think the same idea can be applied to things like perspective as well. Don't tell your art teacher I told you, but even perspective is meant to be experimented with once you have it well understood. Do you wanna know my trick for drawing people in extreme perspectives? It's pretty simple, just rely on appeal and throw planning out the window. Don't let Kim Jong-yi fool you with his random drawings of boxes when he teaches perspective. Yes, that is extremely important to understand when learning, but the goal is to twist things slightly beyond realism. Kim Jong-yi uses this principle superbly in his own work. His perspective is often twisted in whatever way creates an interesting appeal. Oftentimes it creates the effect similar to a curved lens, but his method is based on appeal instead of realism. There's no complex mathematical computation going on in his head. It's all about what feels good and what looks good. Just using the concepts in the fundamentals and manipulating them in whatever way helps your appeal. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out in some way, maybe just a minor chiropractic adjustment of your artistic spine, if anything. I know I've definitely fallen into the trap of realism before, so I'm really just making this video as a reminder to myself as well as everyone else. Don't lose the appeal in your art. Don't let fundamentals and guidelines take you over. Things like Bridgman and Loomis are just the house you build in the hopes of leaving it behind one day. Alright, thanks for watching, and a big thanks to my patrons for helping support me to make these videos. You guys are wonderful. See you everyone.